So, today we're looking at the Japanese music iceberg. Japanese music is something that I've been drawn to most of my life. It's extreme, it's different, the melodies are very unique compared to what you can get from anywhere around the world. There are many places for you to start with Japanese music, like anime and video games, but it goes way beyond that. If you don't know, an iceberg chart is the sum of general knowledge about a topic. More well-known topics are at the top, but it gets increasingly more obscure towards the bottom. I got this one from R Iceberg Charts by the user The Sears Jeremy. Like I've mentioned in the previous video, linguistics and culture play a huge part in the way music is written all around the world. The spoken Japanese language has a different rhythm from English that translates to melodies, chord progressions, and song structures. For example, J-rock bands share the same instruments as any other rock band, like guitar, drums, and bass, but is played in a way that is distinctly Japanese. Since there are so many artists and subgenres to explore, I thought it would be fun to break down an iceberg chart for you. Whether you've only heard Japanese music in passing, or if that's all you listen to, there's something new here for you to learn. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and I'm probably gonna miss something. So from the top, anime songs. <laughs> like all anime songs? There's a lot. From high energy openings and endings to insert songs and the general soundtrack, there's a bunch of iconic music that comes from anime. I've seen bands just ratio the shows that they appear in too. It's obvious why this is the first thing on the list, as most people are introduced to Japanese music through anime. Many of these songs have stayed fairly relevant from just being good songs to being absolutely memed to death. So here are some of my favorite anime songs. really showing my age with these examples. Actually, you know what, I'll add video game music to this one too, since it has a similar impact to anime, if not a bigger impact. Durr and Grey. Formed in 1997, Durr and Grey is one of the most well-known visual K bands of all time. Their sound and look has evolved over time, but you can describe their sound as metallic, industrial, experimental, alternative rock. They draw influence from American metal and new metal bands like Korn, who they've supported on tour. Dirt and Grey has gotten worldwide recognition because of their edgy, gothic look and shocking music videos, as well as their songs in anime and Japanese TV. Their song Child Prey was used as the opening for Baki the Grappler. Maria Takeuchi. Having sold over 16 million records in Japan, she's one of the most well-known artists in Japan. Pretty much all of her releases since 1981 have made it to the Oricon charts, or Japanese version of the Billboard charts. She's one of City Pop's most well-known idols for her 1984 song Plastic Love that blew up internationally once again in the late 2010s due to the rise of City Pop on the internet. <laughs> Baby Metal Perhaps this generation's biggest metal band from Japan, Baby Metal is a group that combines idol culture and metal like death metal and J-pop put together. Metal instrumentals with kawaii vocals mixed with some screams. Formed in 2010, the original lineup consisted of Suzuka Nakamoto as Su Metal, Moa Kikuchi as Moa Metal, and Yui Mizuno as Yui Metal. Yui has since left the group, being replaced by Momoko Okazaki as Momo Metal. They've played sold out shows, festivals, the whole shebang. People around the world love them. Bizu. Bizu is a rock duo formed by Takahiro Tak Matsumoto, and Koshi Inaba. Probably the best-selling rock group out of all of Asia, Bizu is the best-selling band to come out of Japan, having around 50 million album sales throughout their career. They're known for their pop rock acts, more akin to soft rock and J-pop than hard rock, though they have elements of both in their music. Kind of like the Aerosmith of Japan, as put by Marty Friedman. They hold the record for most consecutive number one singles, 49, among other notable sales records. AKB48. Next to Bizu, the second best-selling artist in Japan is the J-pop idol group AKB48. They have the number one spot in terms of singles sold. AKB48 gets its name from the city they're from, Akibahara. They were created by Yasushi Akimoto, a J-pop producer and lyricist who had come up with the concept of idols you can meet. He also created the group Onyanko Club, so he's kind of a master producer in the music industry. 
Japanese idol groups are known to interact with their fans to create loyalty, and Akimoto had the idea of an idol group that performed daily in their own theater so fans can see them whenever they wanted to, rather than waiting for a tour or something. So they're a massive group with many rotating members. Team A, Team K, Team B, with 48 members total. It all makes sense now. They've got a branch of sister groups in Japan and other parts of Asia like China, Thailand, and the Philippines under AKB48 group. <laughs> X Japan Formed in 1982, X Japan is considered to be the pioneers of visual K. Big costumes, hair, makeup. X Japan gained success through independent releases, live shows, and from their look in general. Hide, the original lead guitarist, is considered to be one of Japan's greatest guitar players. The term Visual K came from one of their slogans, Psychedelic Violence Crime of Visual Shock. X Japan were one of the first wave of Visual K bands, along with Dead End and Buck Tick, that paved the way for bands like Nightmare, Anne Cafe, and The Gazette. And I mean literally paved the way. Their drummer and band leader, Yoshiki, created the record label Ecstasy, who signed many Visual K bands, like Lunacy and Glay. Maximum the Hormone. Hell yeah! Maximum the Hormone is like my favorite band ever. I don't even have to do research for this part. Coming from Hachioji, Japan, or Western Tokyo, they were formed in the late 90s. They're best known for their anime songs, creating the second opening and ending themes for Death Note, and they've recently gotten back in the spotlight with their songs in Chainsaw Man, both the anime and the manga. Hormone is known for their crazy music, vulgar sense of humor, and lovable members. Most people only know them from anime, but their discography is full of bangers. With brother and sister duo Ryo and Nao Kawakita on guitar and drums, they're joined by Uhara Futoshi on bass and Daisuke Suda on vocals. They all sing and shout, giving their songs a lot of variety. You can barely tell who the lead singer is. They mash a bunch of different genres into their music like hardcore, rock, punk, nu metal, funk, ska, and pop, just to name a few. Known for their killer live performances, they've become one of Japan's most well-known metal bands, playing at festivals and headlining their own shows. Despite not being well marketed outside of Japan, which is a shame, they've made a name for themselves in the international metal community. They've played a couple times in the US and a few times in Europe. If you know, you know type of thing. Every review on YouTube or article I've read about them just gives them praise. Many people who've attended their live shows say it's the most fun they've ever had at a concert. They follow a more old school philosophy of music, that their music is something that you should pay for to enjoy. If you search them up on YouTube, you won't find any live performances or clips from their DVDs. They take down almost everything if it's not from their official YouTube channel. Streaming services like Spotify don't even have their entire discography. They do sell CDs and stuff on their website, and I'd say they're doing pretty well for themselves, despite being, a uh, gatekept. Their loyal fans are called Harapeko, which means something like hungry people, or with a strong appetite. Japanese or not, their merch and ticket sales always sell out. They're so cool, so much fun. I literally started this channel just to talk about them. I've made a couple videos about them, blah, blah. so check them out if you want to learn more. <laughs> Tier 2, Yellow Magic Orchestra. Known best for their 1978 hit computer game slash firecracker, Yellow Magic Orchestra is an electronic music trio from Tokyo that are considered the pioneers of synth pop. They are credited with greatly expanding and innovating the use of computers, drum machines, and synthesizers in electronic music, as well as influencing the hip hop movement of the 80s with their use of sampling. They've also influenced video game music composers with their use of 8 and 16 bit sounds. Morning Musume. Formed in 1997 by singer, songwriter, and producer Tsunuku, Morning Musume is another one of the most popular J-pop groups in Japan. They have the second highest overall single sales in Oricon Charts history, only to be beaten in 2012 by AKB48. All of their singles made it to the Oricon Top 5 singles list. In their early days, there was more of an emphasis on their harmonies and singing talent over being idols. Like AKB48, they have different branches across Japan and different generations of members. Psy. Psy is an experimental, black metal, avant-garde band formed in 1989. They've experimented with many different sounds and instruments, but stay within the broader metal genre. They're known for being signed to Death Like Silence Records in the early 90s. That's the label that Euronymous of Norwegian black metal band Mayhem founded. If you don't know anything about Mayhem, don't worry, it's another deep rabbit hole. Psy incorporates many traditional Japanese instruments, themes, and artwork into their music. 
Their sound is very dynamic and not strictly black metal. They've combined other Central Asian and Middle Eastern sounds into their music, which further sets them apart from other black metal bands. But that's the nitty gritty of it. You should check out their 22 album Shiki if they sound like anything that might interest you. It combines all sorts of metal, from black to power to epic symphonic. It's a really good album, I think they're best, and has that Japanese tinge of just combining a bunch of different genres and influences together. Like there's synths, screams, choirs, electronic sounds, range of guitar solos, and a saxophone even. All of their major releases and albums actually spell out Sai with the first letter of each release, called an acrostic. Tatsuro Yamashita, the godfather of city pop, singer, songwriter, and producer Tatsuro Yamashita is best known for pioneering that electronic disco funk sound in Japanese pop. His career started in the 70s with groups like Sugar Babe, Niagara Triangle, and solo releases. His most famous song is called Christmas Eve, the best-selling Japanese single of the 80s. He's the best-selling male solo artist from Japan. Many of his songs have layers of vocals that he provides himself creating a heavenly choir of sorts. He's credited for shaping city pop into what it became in the 80s. He's also married to Maria Takeuchi and collaborated with her on many songs, including Plastic Love. Meiko Kaji. More known for her acting career in the 70s, Meiko Kaji has appeared in over 100 roles in TV and movies like Stray Cat Rock, Wandering Ginza Butterfly, Female Prisoner 701 Scorpion, and Lady Snowblood. She's known to play strong female characters and outlaws in her movies. She's actually one of the first Japanese icons to break away from the more conservative roles women had in film. She would sing in tracks that appeared in many of her movies, most famously the theme songs for Lady Snowblood and Female Prisoner 701 Scorpion that would be featured in Kill Bill Volume 1. She saw a bit of a revival in her music career because of that and started releasing new music in 2009 after 31 years since her last release. Metal Lucifer Formed in 1995 by Gezo Lucifer of the Japanese black metal band Sabbath, this band would champion the style of the new wave of British heavy metal. Metal Lucifer means the king of heavy metal hell, according to them. They got super popular in Scandinavia, of all places. They have a pure heavy metal approach and make music about heavy metal. Very meta. Their whole sound and aesthetic revolves around what the essence of heavy metal is, at least to them. Just look at these, bro. I mean, come on, come on. Tier 3 Wagaki Band. One of my favorite Japanese bands at the moment. Wagaki Band is a huge band that combines traditional and Japanese music with rock, metal, and pop to create energetic and hypnotic music. Hence their name, Wagaki Band. They've been around for a little over 10 years, but have gained a major following and have won several awards, even before their first album released. They capture the attention of many around the world through YouTube and single releases. Along with guitar, drums, bass, and vocals, they have a Tsugaru Shamisan player, a Kodo player, Shakuhachi player, and Wadaiko player. Imagine Naruto music? Yeah, they play that kind of stuff. The YouTube algorithm blessed me one day with this video, and I've been playing them ever since. Tomoko Aran Tomoko Aran is a city pop artist and lyricist, releasing nine albums under the Warner Music Japan label from 1981 to 1990, along with being part of the supergroup Nagisa no All Stars. She then focused on writing lyrics for various artists in the 90s. One of her best songs is Midnight Pretenders from the album Fuyukukan. It really hits the spot for me when I'm in the mood for some down-tempo city pop. Death Side Death Side is a Japanese hardcore punk band formed in 1983 to the fall of 1995 and reuniting in 2015. They're like an early crossover band, combining elements of hardcore, punk, rock, and various metal genres into their sound. They're dark, intense, and fast. Lots of guitar solos, grueling vocals, and some crazy drum work. Check them out if you're into hardcore. Anri Born Eiko Kawashimi, Anri is a pop singer slash songwriter who famously made one of the first J-pop anime openings with the song Cat's Eye for the anime with the same name. It debuted at number one on the Oricon singles charts and stayed there for four weeks. She has two other songs that remain popular to this day, frequently being played at weddings and receptions. 
She has a long music career starting in 1978 and has gained popularity once again in the city pop and vaporwave communities. I freaking love her music, the originals and the sampled mixes in vaporwave. Ebisu Muscats. This one's kind of weird, but very Japanese. Established in 2008, Ebisu Muscats is a J-pop idol group consisting of JAV models and actresses. They never had a permanent roster, but frequently have members coming in and out. Momoko Kikuchi. Born in 1968, Momoko Kikuchi made her professional music debut at just 16 in 1984. She instantly shot to fame and become an idol in J-pop under Parfit production. However, she didn't stay in J-pop for very long, forming Ramu, a rock band in the late 80s. Not wanting to go back to idol culture, she became an actress but still released her own music. She's still among the top Japanese musical icons to this day. SOB. SOB, or Sabotage Organized Barbarian, is a hardcore, more specifically grindcore band formed in Osaka in 1983. They're one of the major influences for early grindcore and death metal bands, like Napalm Death. Their songs are like hardcore music, but way faster and grimier, featuring blast beats and nothing but harsh vocals. They have short songs, tons of energy, and violence. Hanatarash. Notorious for their dangerous live shows, Hanatarash also formed in Osaka in 1983 by Yamantaka Ai and featured Zeni Genva. They are primarily a noise group, but moved on to make punk and rock music later in their careers. Some of their more well-known performances include Ai cutting a dead cat in half, throwing Molotov cocktails into the crowd, and of course driving a bulldozer through one of the venues. Audiences would have to fill out forms due to the risk of harm at their shows, and they've since been banned from performing at all in most music venues across Japan. Pad Chennington has a great video about them if you want to learn more. Not included, but the Gero Gero Gegege is a notable noise act that's highly regarded alongside Hanata Rash. Born in 1954, Susumu Hirasawa is a Japanese musician and composer, known for working with Satoshi Kon and the Berserk series, along with his solo career. He's got his hand in many genres, from surf rock to progressive metal to punk rock and electronic rock. Primarily a guitar player, he's an avid fan of science fiction and psychology, themes that he would include in his music. Like many artists in Japan, he kind of transcends genre. He's known for using many instruments and performs live with some that he makes himself. He participates in activism and frequently gives to charity. An album that the Sears Jeremy recommended me was Kai Equals Kai, an album that he released under the name Kaku P Model. Tier 4, Necronomadol. Prominent in the alt-idol and kawaii metal movement like baby metal, Necronomadol is known for combining J-pop with industrial rock, punk, and most notably black metal. You can hear shoegaze and witch house in their sound too. Their name comes from combining Necronomicon and idol, and they sport a ghostly shrine maiden look. They've had a rotating cast of members and are managed by Ricky Wilson, an American expat living in Japan. Melt Banana. Melt Banana is a noise rock, hardcore punk rock band formed in 1992. They're known for playing extremely fast and combining pop and electronica into their music. However, as they grew as a band, they strayed away from genre as a whole. They describe their music as a chimera. Vocalist Yasuko Onuki and guitarist Ichiro Agata are the two main members that have been there since the beginning, along with bassist Rika Hamamoto. They had a full band lineup in the past, but currently don't have a drummer or bassist anymore. They still perform live, either with a guest drummer or with just the two of them, often using tracks and covering songs that they like along with their originals. Marishita. I assume this one's for Tokihiko Marishita, a jazz pianist, synthesist, and composer known for his albums like Tokata and Golgo 13. He also worked in Akira and Urusei Yatsura 2, Beautiful Dreamer. Hiroki Morishita is one of the main composers for the Fire Emblem series. He's not just a composer, but a sound engineer and game designer too. That works under the Intelligent Systems Company, a company that makes music for various Nintendo series like Metroid, WarioWare, and Paper Mario. Morishita is not only credited for working in those series, but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate too. <laughs> if you played any Nintendo game, you might have heard his music. 
Fast Kill. Fast Kill is a thrash metal band formed in 1996, but were previously known as Agony before that. Consisting of Toshio Komori on vocals and bass, Jiro Mochizuki on guitar, and Kazuki Mochida on drums. They were a five-piece band with Komori on vocals, but they've transitioned to a three-piece with just those members. Currently under Pulverized Records, their songs are about destruction, thrash, death, and violence. Solid thrash metal stuff, like Slayer, Early Metallica, and Demolition Hammer. Komori has some seriously unhinged vocals, literally screaming like a crazy person. Especia. Meaning spice in Spanish, Especia is a disco idol group formed in June 2012, combining jazz fusion and funk into their sound. Consisting of a live band and 10 vocalists, they released some very good music until they disbanded in 2017. They, like many idol groups, had a big cast of members, but did not last very long as many would graduate the group without being replaced. By the end, only two of the founding members and the only new hire would remain. But they were all about quality in their music. They've got some of the best instrumentalization in J-pop that I've ever heard. Their band is tight, their harmonies are tight, and they even have drum solos and saxophone solos. They had a one-off reunion show in 2022 to celebrate their 10th anniversary, but that was it. Put them on during a party and people will start moving. I highly recommend them. If you don't know who Hako Yamasaki is, wake the f*** up! She was a pioneer of the Japanese folk boom who started her career after high school in the early 70s, as well as traditional J-pop later. Her debut album, Tobi Masu, comes to mind as one of the best dark blues, folk, jazzy noir albums to me. It's the kind of music you imagine black and white noir movies to feature, where the protagonist is smoking a cigarette and drinking a whiskey outside in the rain. She is recognized for having a powerful, achy voice for her size. She was among the first Japanese female artists to sing songs in her own perspective, sharing both pain and nostalgia. She was popular in the beginning of her career, but kind of lost her fame as the years went on, edging on homelessness in the 80s. But she's become an icon once again. If anything, check out her song Sasurai, or Wandering, from Tobi Masu. Maki Asakawa Born in 1942, she was a jazz and blues singer, composer, and lyricist. Maki Asakawa was known as an important voice for the Japanese counterculture movement during the 60s. Like Yamasaki, she had a powerful voice with intense recordings in both English and Japanese, accompanied only by acoustic guitar and drums. Her 1972 album, Blue Spirit Blues, is one of her best. Envy Envy is a six-piece post-hardcore band formed in 1992 with three guitarists. Envy would be an influence on the Japanese post-hardcore, post-rock, and screamo scenes. They're like a very intense, emotional band. They've released seven studio albums along with a bunch of singles, EPs, and splits. Most notably, they're split with Thursday, an American post-hardcore band. They're currently making some great post-rock music, stuff that transports your heart into the sky and just makes you want to cry. Oh, f bars, dude. Like seriously, their music is pure emotion and makes you want to cry. Even if you're like me and don't speak Japanese. You can see their vocalist wiping away either sweat or tears in many of their live sets. Tier 5. Yoshiko Sai. Born in 1953, Yoshiko Sai is a singer, composer, and poet who began her career after high school in 1975. She was diagnosed with a kidney disease that left her bedridden during her early college years and was influenced by bizarre and dreamlike books that she would read to make her feel better. She began writing poems and would turn them into songs so that many people could listen to them at once. You could classify her in the progressive jazz, folk, and art pop subgenres. She released two albums and then went on to write soundtracks for movies. She kept a low prile for over 20 years, but began republishing some of her poems and music in 2001, as well as new material, which saw a resurgence in her career. Toyo Hirakumin. I'll just call them Toyo. Toyo is a mysterious vaporwave mall soft artist, allegedly from Sapporo, who emerged in 2013. They combine pop and hip hop into their sound, creating an airy, dreamy atmosphere with their music. Though they implement many sounds and genres into their over 140 releases. I haven't listened to everything, obviously, but Toyo makes music that you can imagine yourself listening to in a clear glass elevator going up 80 floors. Like many bedroom vaporwave artists, you can find and support Toyo on Bandcamp. Bikaren. 
Born in 1994, Hikari Shiina, known as Pikarin, is a Japanese model, singer, and TV personality. She was a troubled, violent child who'd often get suspended from school for destroying property and lighting firecrackers. From 2010 to 2016, she'd model for Pop Teen, a teen fashion magazine, and began her music career in 2012. She'd make songs for TV and anime, often starring in those same shows. Her music is like electronic hyperpop with a circusy spin to it. She's branded herself as an idol from the demon world. She sports both gyaru and punk culture, kind of like the real life Kuromi. Kanashimi. Oh, wow. Formed in 2007, Kanashimi is a solo project by a guy that goes by misanthropy from the Japanese black metal band Samayoi. Kanashimi means sorrow or sadness in Japanese, and like the name suggests, the music is very sad. It can be classified as funeral doom or DSBM, depressive black metal. What's interesting about Kanashimi is their use of piano in their songs. It's piano-led funeral doom with black metal vocals. <laughs> Boom, I got it! Misanthropy is a very talented musician as he plays all the instruments, including the piano for this project. It's dark, symphonic, emotional, and heavy. Akiko Shikata Singer-songwriter born in 1971 and known for her work in video games and anime, Akiko Shikata is an independent creator who began her career with piano and synthesizers, only adding her voice in her later years as a creator, as she wasn't satisfied with it early on. Though it came later, her vocal work would become the most distinct thing about her music. She has some complex and very traditional vocal work in her music, and many of her tracks would have hundreds of layers. She's big in the indie scene in Japan and has worked on countless titles in both video games and anime. Arkazva Arka Zva is a satanic black metal band formed in 1996, and they probably have the most furious vocals out of all the metal bands I've listened to on this list. The guy straight sounds like a demon. There's sad, powerful guitar work along with a great snare tuning. One of the best snares I've heard in black metal. They belong to the quadruple A collective of Japanese black metal bands including Ap Degma, Angus Day, and Absolutized. All demonic satanic black metal bands. Arka's Va is my favorite out of all of them. Blaze. There are a bunch of Japanese bands named Blaze. I can only assume that since we're this deep into the iceberg, we're talking about the hardcore band from the early 90s. They released their only EP titled But Nothing Ever Change in light of the Gulf War and other world conflicts. It only has five songs, but it's so sick. Great use of gang vocals too. They provide music for compilations in both Japan and the UK. Their EP was re-released in 2020 as Still Nothing Ever Change that contains their entire discography, only 21 tracks, including unreleased material and demos. Now, I'm no hardcore historian, though I love the genre and going to shows, but the fact that this EP is still alive shows you the impact that they had on hardcore, especially Japanese hardcore. It captured the hearts of many Japanese listeners due to its aggression and lyrics, and the same can be said for people around the world today. <laughs> Corrupted. Formed in 1994 in Osaka, Corrupted is a doom metal, sludge metal band. They are one of the heaviest bands ever. They sound like you're being run over by a truck in slow motion. Aside from how they sound, what's crazy about them is that their music is in Spanish. There are some sections of English and Japanese, but how odd, huh? What's even crazier about them is that they genre switch and add many different instruments into their songs. Ever listen to a doom metal album and get interrupted by an acoustic set? How about a harp? Their image is mysterious too. They avoid interviews and have no professional photos taken of them. They do play live and interact with their fans though. Deep Girl Deep Girl was a short-lived J-Rock slash Kawaii Metal idol group. There were seven members and only stayed together from 2015 to 2017. You could compare them to Baby Metal or whatever, but they sound like Garugamesh to me. <laughs> If you know who Garugamesh is, go listen to Deep Girl's first single and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah! Al Kamar. This is some weird music. 
Described on their band camp as Japanese post-black metal depressive rock project slash band, very shoegazy stuff in some of their songs too. Hypnotic and weird. Listen to their song Black End. <laughs> Tatch Music Circle Shimizu Tatsuya, known as Tatch, is a composer and musician from Chiba. He's known for creating epic orchestral techno tracks. He's most well known for creating music for Bimani rhythm games, stuff like DDR and Beat Mania, widely known by Bimani fans as the artist behind the song Zephyr. Tatch Music Circle includes all of his work along with some close friends and collaborators. Ancient Cosmos From Tokyo, Ancient Cosmos is a one-man project started in 2015 doing epic, melodic, symphonic death metal. The guy behind it goes by Lord Nothingness, all caps with spaces, and has a sweet profile picture. A very obscure find, he's still active and is working on some other solo projects, like War Daemon and Holiest Era. Imperial Circus Dead Decadence Formed in 2007 in Fukuoka, this is a power metal, death metal, symphonic metal band. Many elements of deathcore and metalcore too with clean vocal choruses. They switch up in a bunch of their songs. I've never heard of them until making the script. It's fun to go into the comments section and just see people's reactions. Oh wait, what is this? They're completely independent, self-releasing all of their albums until their most recent one in 2022. Very bold, enjoyable songs. Definitely for metalheads. Honorable Mentions Aside from this iceberg, I have a huge library of Japanese music, so I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some of my favorites. Larkenshiel Haha, <laughs> you didn't think I forgot about them! Meaning the rainbow in French, Larkenshiel or Laruku, as their Japanese fans call them, formed in Osaka in the early 90s and are one of the biggest J-rock acts of the last 30 years. Initially a visual K band, their 1993 album Dune set them on a path to become one of the most successful rock bands in the world. With bangers like Honey, Stay Away, Ready Steady Go, the entire Awake album, they are a very solid band. One of my favorites. If you're into J-Rock, you've probably heard of them already, or at least their vocalist, Hyde. He's a superstar in Japan and is involved in many other projects. Asian Kung Fu Generation Above Larkenshiel on my list, Ajikan is my favorite J-Rock band, period. Not only have they made some of my favorite anime openings for Naruto and Full Metal Alchemist, but they have an amazing discography all around. I'm a big fan of their earlier, more raw stuff, and they're still going strong and have my favorite album artwork out of all of these Japanese bands I've listed. Also from Kyoto, Otoboke Beaver is an all-female punk band formed in 2009. They make energetic, expressive music that's silly and fun. They've got a distinct look and are gaining a lot of traction with the release of their new album last year. Most of their songs have all four members singing or yelling. Hideki Naganuma, the composer of some of the most iconic video game soundtracks ever. Most well known for his tracks in Jet Set Radio, He's also worked in Sonic Rush and Lethal League. He is part of the definitive sound of the Sega Dreamcast and PS1 era of games. A great mix of electronic, hip-hop, and funk. Naganuma's work is very distinct, and I love putting him on when I'm gaming. Nujibes, the godfather of lo-fi hip-hop. He's among the first producers in the world to add jazz and other world music samples into hip-hop. May he rest in peace. He was gone too soon and never lived to see the impact of his music. Crush 40, known for their work in the Sonic Adventure games and Sonic 06. If you know, you know how awesome their music is. Hanabie, up and coming J Rock slash metalcore band from Tokyo, formed in 2015. These girls are blowing up right now, especially with the release of their new album and recent tour finishing up. I got to see them live in Dallas. Starting in their teens, they've been grinding and have really made a name for themselves the past two years. <laughs> Tier 6. Endless Dismal Moan Formed on May 5th, 2001, its sole member was a man named Takuya Tsutsui, aka Chaos9. There's very little known about him, but he was born in 1980 and is from Osaka. He self-released several demos from 2001 to 2004 and three full-length albums in 2006, 2007, and 2010 under signed record labels. The first of which featured his friend and guitarist Lydian Six. He would play guitar for EDM's live shows too, where Chaos 9 took vocals. Backing tracks would fill in the rest. EDM is a sort of figure in the black metal scene because of its tragic nature. The name Endless Dismal Moan describes his mind. In an email interview, Chaos 9 states, My mind is darkness, no salvation. This anguish possesses me to create music. 
And the music he creates is just the saddest black metal ever, like a nightmare coming to life. The guitar work and drums are very hypnotic, and his vocals are really good. Very haunting, and you can feel the pain. You can't even understand what he's saying, and that's part of his point, to make you feel his music. Someone's gonna listen to him and go, This fucking sucks. These quotes are coming from an email interview that I got from this video. Go check it out if you want to learn more about Chaos 9. On June 25th, 2008, EDM and Chaos 9 would both come to an end. His 2010 album, named Curse of Underground, is known as his posthumous work. Sabbathid, the record label it's published under, made it a point to say that it's not a compilation or anything, but an entirely new album. EDM remains to be an inspiration for many in the black metal community. Controlled Death Controlled Death is a noise project created by Maso Yamazaki, aka Masana. He is a legend in the Japanese noise scene, along with Merzbao, who he works with in a few collaborations. I don't really listen to noise, but his music reminds me of dark ambient stuff. It's many times harsh noise, black noise, and experimental. I don't even know if you can call it music, right? <laughs> it's noise, not music. A lot of his stuff is bleak, and his releases all differ from each other. Some would be industrial noise, others would feature different instruments or distorted screaming. Sounds like movie sound effects, weird stuff. Masana has an extensive career dating back to 1987. He was influenced by Hanatarash and another noise group called LSD. He's a very wild individual and Controlled Death is just one of his newer projects. He has a very extensive noise career. And so does Merzbao. Arguably the most popular noise artist of all time, definitely in Japan. Like Controlled Death, Merzbao's stuff is aggressive and blends many sounds together. Pad Channington, again, has a great video about noise music. And just putting my own opinion here, my favorite noise or noise adjacent piece is Merzbao and Full of Hell's collaboration. Full of Hell is a newer grindcore death metal band that's been active since 2009. They're loved in the hardcore community frequently playing at hardcore shows and festivals. Collab with Merzbao is really good. It's got a blend of grindcore and noise if you're into those extreme genres of music. So that's it. I hope you learned something. Thanks for sticking till the end. It got kind of weird there, huh? There are many places to start with Japanese music. I mean, it is a whole country's catalog of music. This is just one of the paths you can take. Shout out to the Sears Jeremy again for letting me use his template. He even added some suggestions too. No matter what kind of music you're into, you're bound to find a Japanese version of it. Just know, there's a reason why Maximum the Hormone is at the top of this list. Alright, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.